the force be with us all because Rise of Skywalker is officially in theaters and with that means it's time to dive into all the spoilers that I couldn't talk about in my non-spoiler review. So if you haven't seen the film yet and you don't want to know any spoilers, make sure you go head over to that non-spoiler review. But of course in this video we're going to be going into an all full spoiler details because now I can get into all the nitty gritty that I couldn't talk about in that non-spoiler review. Again, if you guys are also new here, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button for all sorts of content like this, early movie reviews, and geeky stuff on a daily basis. And just make sure to comment down below and let me know what your guys' thoughts are. Did you guys like this film? Did you hate it? Let's discuss it down below, guys, because the thing is, this film is subjective. If you love this film, I'm happy for you. If you hated the film, awesome. More power to you. That's what's great about film, and I'm happy to discuss it with you guys down below in the comments. I'm curious to hear what some of your favorite moments were in this movie. Of course, let's get started talking spoilers for Rise of Skywalker. easiest way I've kind of taken into these spoiler reviews is to kind of just discuss it like someone's standing right in front of me. Take a more laid back approach, sit back, relax, and talk with someone like I just got out of watching Rise of Skywalker with you. And on the second viewing, I definitely still feel the same about this movie. The issues that I have at hand are still there. The things that I love about it are still there. And the things I dislike are still there. There's things that I still have issues with. And a lot of the things that you're going to have those conversations with with our people is the revelations, the twists and turns that you learn throughout the whole movie. Now, in my non-spoiler review, if you didn't get to check that out, I did really like the movie. In fact, I liked it. I thought it was a good movie. But, as a, as a movie itself, I do think there are a lot of core issues to it. And two of the things being, one is actually just wrong with the movie in general. And the second thing I think actually entwines into this whole new trilogy, and in fact, everything going back to Lucasfilm, which I have to say is that there was clearly no outline to why this film and the whole this whole new trilogy at all. I know they've said that there's a new outline. There isn't. There was no outline whatsoever. Maybe JJ had an idea. Definitely maybe Ryan on Johnson had an idea for where the trilogy can go. But there was no clear set provocative of where things were going to go. And it's quite annoying to see that because I love Force Awakens. I love what they set up in there. Last Jedi subverted almost every expectation I wanted. Some for the good, some for the bad, and things that I didn't care about. But... It made me appreciate some things more, and it made me look at Star Wars in a different perspective. And I did a whole video essay discussing why Last Jedi, I don't think, ruined the fan base of Star Wars. I think us fans have ruined the fan base of Star Wars. But I also look, think Lucasfilm has helped with that. And I don't think we should point fingers at Ryan Johnson. I think we should point fingers at Lucasfilm and being like, how, how could you start a trilogy without having any outline? And some people might point to the original trilogy being like that, but the original trilogy, while like that, the films are all great. But also the thing with it is that they kept going in that precise manner. Not did Force Awakens, did Last Jedi, which did continue off Force Awakens and just subverted a lot of our expectations, and then decided to make a third film in the trilogy that is pretty much just a sequel to Force Awakens and skipping a lot of what Last Jedi established while taking some core elements but that really you don't know. Really, if you missed Last Jedi for some reason, I don't think you really needed to see it at all for this film. And it actually makes me... While I still stick by my rating for that movie, it makes me want to not rewatch Last Jedi ever again because I don't think you need to. The thing with Rise of Skywalker though with it is, again, the second thing I have the issue with is pacing. Pacing, pacing, pacing. The movie is way too fast. And anytime there's a revelation, almost 90% of those revelations and twists and turns that happen in this movie, there's no time to stop. And it's like you're dri I put it as you're driving on a freeway going 85 miles per hour and you go right past a car crash that just happened but you're going so fast that you can't stop but you're still trying to look to see if people are all right to see if you should get out and help them that's how uh, rise of skywalker is because you're going so fast that when a revelation happens or a twist or turn happens besides at least one or two of them that does take its time it goes right past them and you're like going back and you're like wait 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 can we retread for just a couple seconds so i can understand what just occurred on the screen and that's what becomes some of the biggest issues for me within rise of skywalker because now that we're turning into those twists and turns and everything in here because pretty much this movie opens up and you can clearly see if jj were to have made the whole trilogy you would have clearly seen that this opening act would have been the second film and the third act the second midway through the second act to the third act would have been the third film absolutely 100% would have been that and you feel that very prevalent inside of here where it's all tied in into these manners so 
opens up on Kylo Ren. He gets a Sith holocron. He moves in and flies towards this really cool Sith temple that we've seen and something that's kind of straight out of Star Wars Rebels, which I did like the little nods that they had in here that really go back to the books, the comics, the video games, all stuff like that that kind of ties in in very subtle ways that doesn't make you feel like it's outside the baseball park, but in a sense actually pretty nice that I think will actually make people look into some of those other elements too. Besides that, a lot of those were subtle. He, he ends up going there and, oh, whoa, whoa, Palpatine's alive. What? How? They don't explain that, but I, I, I'm going with the thing that he's possessing and being able to move his soul through different bodies through some of the conversation that he has with Rey in the third act. I, that's just kind of what's going through my head. Again, they don't really explain it at all. But you also learn that he's been cloning Snoke. Like, he created Snoke and has been the puppeteer behind the whole thing. Cool. So now we know where Snoke came from. One thing off the list, something that a lot of us expected, you know, a lot of us very much expected that thing. And obviously, last year I killed off Snoke. Maybe JJ didn't want that. Maybe all along it truly was the Palpatine the controlling that. But you don't get that satisfying thing where Palpatine shows up in the beginning and it just feels like it's truly for nothing. Like, it's just truly for this film to kind of win back some of the fan base. And while I still like that Palpatine's in here. I, a lot of the things in here don't feel earned, and a lot of you guys might be wondering, why is he wearing a Game of Thrones shirt during a Star Wars review? Here's the thing. I think this movie has the same issues that I had with Game of Thrones Season 8. Game of Thrones Season 8 had many, 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 many big twists and turns happen throughout that whole season. But guess what? The same thing that they did in Skywalker, they did in Game of Thrones. They rushed through it all. None of it felt earned at all. And if you would have built up some of these things over a couple seasons, just like in Game of Thrones, or within Star Wars, within a couple movies, and not feeling like it wasn't misplaced or it was more coherent, then you would be sitting there in that funnel, just going like, damn, this, this can work. And that's what really made it not work for me. And I just have that same pacing with Rise of Skywalker is that it's flying towards the finish line because it's just trying to get through all these things. And I will give the movie credit. As the movie went on, it did get better. First to the third act, it got better as it went on, even though the pacing was still flying through it all. And that two hours and 21 minutes did fly by really fast. I just think that there was at least 20 to 30 minutes on the chopping block that could have been used in here to kind of take the time on certain revelations. That was one of the revelations I wish it would have sat on a little bit more. Had a bigger conversation between Kylo and Palpatine. Not just rush to see Finn, Poe, and Chewbacca, and C-3PO, and all of them back together. And of course, to see what Rey is doing as well. There's all elements with inside there, but moving into the next big revelation that we find out is Rey herself. She is Rey Palpatine. Now, she is the granddaughter of Palpatine. Palpatine apparently had a son who got married, and they had a kid. Now, I actually don't mind this reveal. I actually like that she is a part of Palpatine, and it's cool to see how, like, Kylo Ren was, in a sense, the grandson of Darth Vader, and she is the granddaughter of Palpatine. Yeah, cool things in there. Does it feel earned? Nope. Because, again rushes past it and you're like wait 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 wait, can we back it up a bit we just found out that she was palpatine we're not taking any seconds to oh, okay we're going on to the next thing all right but we can sit on that just a bit more you know we've been waiting five six years to see where she came from you know damn just let's just keep going so they do keep going and again it's one of those moments that i wanted to now we do get to one of my favorite sequences in the whole entire film and absolutely the one reveal the one twist and turn in here that really did they took their time with and again even though i don't feel like it was completely earned i thought it worked for the scene and it's the scene between kylo and ray they're fighting on the remnants of the death star on the uh one of the moons of endor really cool scene in that whole fact absolutely loved her going through the death star uh going to find that other sith holocron of course kylo ren comes destroys it breaks it they have their lightsaber fight that we've seen in many of the trailers i really like that whole moment i thought it was cool i'm all for it to be honest with that whole part they continue this on, they fight, they fight, they fight, but then Princess Leia herself, which I do have to give a major shout out to, I thought they did such wonders with movie magic within Carrie Fisher. Obviously, you can totally tell that they reused lines or reused other unused footage to kind of put her into the hear this film, but I thought it worked, and she truly became the soul of this movie, and seeing Princess Leia on screen for one last time was truly magical, but we know where it was leading up to. She goes to use the rest of her Force capabilities that we find out about, and she pretty much just tries to talk to Ben, Kylo Ren himself. He talks, it, it, it hits him, and she grabs Kylo Ren's lightsaber and shoves it right through him. At that moment, I went, damn, she killed him. 
holy shit where is this going but then she healed him and that's actually a lot of the things in this film that happen where they do something and it's like wait 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 that might be too risky we don't want to do that that could piss off the fan base let's revert that back and surprise them like when they kill off chewbacca now he's just on another carrier which i assumed but again reversed it back same thing with c-3po we have to fry his memory chip and to get to find out where this location of this item is okay fried his memory chip oh wait r2d2 they said he didn't have a memory bank restored for c-3po oh wait they do Okay, let's keep going on and on. Oh, shit. She just stabbed Kylo Ren. Oh, wait. She's going to force heal him. Okay. All right. So we're just going to reverse back on that. And they did it so many times throughout it that it did feel like they were like, all right, we don't want to piss people off like The Last Jedi did. And I really felt like they were looking at that and being like, okay, we can't, we can't piss people off like this. We do have to still have some stakes in here. We have to have some of this. And I know like a lot of the spoiler review, it's going to be quite surprising to hear my rating at the end of it. But these are my nitpicks and things that I couldn't talk about in that, that non-spoiler review. But again, one of my favorite moments was this whole scene. Even though, again, I think it is annoying that they kept reverting back and being like, haha, JK, that actually didn't happen. But of course, this goes on and on and on. Pretty much Kylo Ray. They end up their fight. She heals him. She gets in his TIE fighter, flies off to the island that Luke was on. We then get this one scene that I absolutely love. Again, I don't think it was completely earned, but I thought it was, I loved it. And it's because I got the goosebumps. I got the tears. I got the smile on my face. And it, you hear him and the man himself, Han Solo, comes up behind Kylo Ren. And they have a great discussion, which halters back to Force Awakens. Thought it was a brilliant sequence. He throws his lightsaber in the water. And I'm actually going to say this. I believe if Carrie Fisher was alive, that would have been her sequence. That would have been 100% her sequence in that position of what would have happened. And instead of Han Solo, it would have been Princess Leia talking to her son. And that would have been the end of it. And that would have been the turn on it. I 100% remember they talking about how there was one major sequence that they were going to have with Carrie Fisher and Ben Solo. And they never got to do it. This was that sequence. And I think they were like, okay, next best bet is be a Harrison Ford. Bring him in, do it. And I thought it was wonderful how they did it all. Throws the lightsaber in and we don't know where he goes until later in the story. Moving forward, she gets into and lands on the planet that Luke was on. That little island with the porgs everywhere. Yeah, we get to see some porgs. Whatever. She blows up the ship. She goes to throw the lightsaber and destroy is it. And Master Luke himself holds it, grabs it, and moves in and has a great discussion with her. And I actually really liked against this. Again, a lot of retconning in here in the way that he's talking about The Last Jedi and how he acted in it. Pretty much telling her, you need to go forward. You need to go save your friends. Do all this, this, and that. He, she takes her ex, his X-Wing from the original trilogy, which was just great. I was really wishing he would have done it in Last Jedi, but we get to see her flying it. And also, we get a little flashback sequence with some de-aging Mark Hamill and Princess Leia of, of course, them lightsaber training, and she gets two fucking lightsabers. Now, we get to see her deal with it for a second. I've been waiting for her to click it together or turn her staff into a lightsaber. We'll get into that in a second, what she does with her lightsaber at the end, but again, I liked it. Really liked the scene overall, and just the way that they are all discussing and talking, and then it moves into the finale, which again, I really like the finale, which I will say though, another nitpick. I was expecting this to be a bigger battle, like a bigger space battle, kind of like how Endor was in Return of the Jedi. We didn't get that necessarily. It was it was good, like even better on the second time, I would say, just because I knew what I was getting this time around. And again, I, I did like the movie a little bit more the second time around, even though like the pacing was still a major issue for me. I've kind of just taken it was it is. And I've always said this when it comes to Star Wars, that I'm going to take the good, the bad, the ugly with it because I do love Star Wars and the nature and the world and the characters and all of it. And even though I'm not the one telling the story and I would have changed in multiple different things, I'm along for the ride. That's just the truth. All the Star Wars fans are going to be bitching and nitpicking about certain things, but at least it's cool that we have more Star Wars, even though if it's not everything that we wanted to. And hopefully with the future of Star Wars, they can improve these characters in even more light. They can add into the world because yes, everyone survives except a couple people, which we will get to. Well, pretty much just one, which leads us into the finale of Rey versus Palpatine. They have this great conversation and in a sense, moving into this whole thing, man, this is the one fight that I was wishing was a little bit longer. It's cool to see how Palpatine is. It's kind of like a horror, like it really did feel like a horror film in this. And I actually liked how JJ Abrams shot this whole aspect of the film. Did it work completely? Yeah, I think for the most part it did, but I was just wanting a little bit more. Now, of course we see her kind of maybe turning to the dark side to take his place. So that way she can save all of his friends, even though we know that's not what's gonna happen. And Kylo Ren ends up coming 
nice little new outfit brings a blaster knights of ren turn the corner and they are ready to fight now again i, I was like kind of let down on them as well i was like so we're building up these baddies and they're coming back for nothing nothing happened kylo ren ends up fighting them they have this little force connection thing that's again been going down throughout the whole movie she passes the lightsaber gives it to kylo whoops the knights of ren's asses and then they both show up together to fight palpatine which was a great look but Pal palpatine whoops their ass takes their souls throws kylo ren over the shaft just like darth vader did to him and Rey is sitting right there. She regains the strength to come back, grabs both lightsabers, shoots them together. As lightning is shooting from the sky into the sky from him, he recognizes it, shoots it back at her. And there's just a great moment of there where she grabs the other lightsaber and holds it back together and really kills him in that. Which I want to go back to that other, the lightning sequence. Kind of halt her back to what Haldo did in Last Jedi where she shot the hyperspeed ship through the alt one of the fleets this was kind of like that moment kind of jaw dropping like holy shit how strong is palpatine why has he never done that shit before but of course he ends up dying ray dies in the process kylo ren comes back up and in a sense they have this whole thing he ends up force healing her she comes back to life and they kiss i i hated that moment I, that, that's probably like the one thing I real I rolled my eyes on. I'm like, Jesus Christ, come on now. And it felt like fan fiction in that whole part. I was like, what the fuck are you doing? Seriously, like, and I don't think I would have bothered me as much if it was either earned or it was even, let me tell you, Kylo Ren lived. No, he died. They kiss and he dies. If he would have lived, I think I would have been 100% more on board with that choice. But he didn't. No, no, he died. So whatever, we move on. They end up having a great big party. Yay, we survived. And again, there's a lot of great sequences in that space sequence. I really had fun with it. You also move into a bunch of other elements that are all around in this world. And again, there's a bunch of great elements in here. There's a bunch of great action set pieces in here that all the way go around. You have a lot of the stuff in the space desert, seeing freaking Lando Carissian back flying the Millennium Falcon. It just gives you goosebumps and all in that favor. And even though a lot of these other characters that show up on different planets like Lando or Carrie Russell's character or even Johanna who really Carrie Russell and Johanna should give major major props to they are phenomenal in those roles and they really brought a wicked charm to them for such small screen time I want more of both of them and obviously Lando and Johanna have this little thing going at the end it's like oh so we're gonna get a something spin-off right there for you two and probably even Poe and Carrie Russell's character who knows on that part of course we're setting up the spin-offs for the future which I actually wouldn't mind, but it's still, I, I hate when movies do that, but I did like seeing those moments with them, even though it did feel like conveniences, like, oh, we're on this planet. Oh, oh, hey, we can help you. Oh, I'm going to blow your head off. Oh, wait, Poe, do you want to get back together? Do you want to leave with me? Come on now. Same thing with Lando. Lando comes in to save him right at that minute and then directs him to it. Again, it was nice seeing Lando back. I just think he should have been in this trilogy longer or even earlier in the series. But so they all, they're all celebrating, yada, 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 having a great time. Finn never tells Rey what he was going to tell her, but we know what it was going to be that he loved her. Let's be honest that that was going to be the thing that he was going to say. And yeah, we see some Ewoks, which I, I smile at, but I was like, I knew that was coming. Uh, you get some other cool droid instances all in here. Really, it's just a big celebration, and I actually thought that's where the film was going to end, but no, it does end on a fantastic final shot, which some people might be like, oh, that's unoriginal. I'm kind of fine for it. Yeah, it's predictable. You kind of knew it was going to end in that way, but I liked it because it ends on the moons of her on Tatooine with BB-8, which I kind of like how it's haltering back to Rey going back to, to a desert planet, Tatooine, instead of Jakku and her bearing luke and leia's lightsabers and this old lady comes across and asks her what's her name and she says ray and the old lady says but what's but ray who and she looks and she sees the force ghost of princess leia and luke skywalker himself and she goes skywalker and walks in the frame you see her in front of the moons and it ends right there and I really liked that ending. I liked Rey Skywalker. I'm for it. I was actually kind of waiting for her to say Rey Palpatine, but she's not Palpatine. Palpatine is the disgrace name. Skywalker has been redeemed because of Luke. And in all in that favor, the universe is saved. Again, I thought the score was great. If it just was for the pacing, I think I would have liked this film so much more. I like a lot of these reveals. I just don't think they were earned. And if you hated them, 
that's that's honestly great that that's your guys' thoughts but before we get into the end of this video guys make sure again to comment down below let me know what your guys thoughts are on this i can't wait to discuss with you guys if you're a fan and you love this movie let's discuss if you hated this movie let's discuss it and of course guys make sure again to hit that like and subscribe button head over to sandwich on films as well on how to see films early and of course a big thank you to you and a big thank you to my patreon supporters because without you i wouldn't be able to do this skywalker saga has officially ended and while i didn't i think it was a little underwhelming for me i still walked out having a good time with it there are some great elements to it. It's a little bit rushed. Well, not even a little bit. A lot a bit rushed. And I felt like the pacing was just slowed down a bit and took some time with some of these moments that were given to us. Then it could have been accepted in a better way. Many people are going to have issues with them. And I'm going to understand. I will never shit on anyone for telling me this movie sucks. But I will also never shit on anyone for saying this is their favorite Star Wars film. I take the good, the bad, and the ugly of Star Wars. I always will because I love this franchise so much and I'm always going to be in for it as well. I'm excited to see where the saga, not even the saga, but in general where the world goes next and where Lucasfilms decides to take it. I really am ex I, I really am liking The Mandalorian, but I'm curious to see who takes in charge of Lucasfilm. Does Kathleen Kennedy continue? I, I really doubt it. But I, I have to imagine that Favreau and Filoni will be the next ones on board to take care of this franchise and I'm curious to see where they go next. Again, I like The Mandalorian a lot. Really excited for Obi-Wan, and I'm excited for the future of Star Wars. That, that's the truth. The saga is out of the way. I'm really interested to see more of these characters, and I think there's a lot more stories to be told with them. So even though I think we went on on a whimper with the saga, I think it does answer a lot of questions for the whole saga in general. Feels very complete in its nature, but maybe not for the trilogy itself. So guys, with all that said, thank you guys again so much for watching this. I am going to keep my rating of a B plus. I think it's still deserving of that. Maybe I'd even move it down to a B, but only time will tell how this film ages. Will it be better? Will it be worse? Time will tell. Honestly, months to years from now will tell, but I'm still, you know, I don't think it's a disgrace to this saga. I, I just think it went out a little bit of a whimper, but thank you guys again so much for watching this. And of course, May the Force be with us all. I'll catch you guys tomorrow on my ranking for Star all the Star Wars movies.